ഓക്കെ ഐ എം ബാക്ക് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ சார் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாமா வெயிட் பண்ணலாமா சார் இது எவ்வளவு பேர் வந்திருக்காங்க 105 சார் ஓகே சார் டைம் கரெக்ட்டா இல்ல 11 இல்ல 11 11 கரெக்ட்டா 11 சார் இப்ப ஆமா ஒரு 2 3 मिनिट्स இருக்கு ஆ ஓகே சார் ஓகே 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 சார் பண்ணலாம் இல்ல எல்லாம் வந்தத தரோம் பண்ணலாமா என்னங்க சார் இல்ல இன்ஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் ஏதோ பிரசன்டேஷன் ஏதோ ஆமா சார் நம்ம ப்ரோமோஷனல் வீடியோ சார் எல்லாம் வந்ததக்கு அப்புறம் போட்டா தான் ரீச் ஆகும் சார் ஓகே 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 சார் ஓகே Hello, Principal Sir Bala here. How are you? Fine, fine, Bala. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing so great. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. I used to follow Nanda Alimini. I couldn't get time to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for granting this opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bala. It's a pleasure to us. <laughs> so, Principal Sir, பாலாஜி எஸ் சார் யாரோ ஒண்ணா क्वेश्चन பண்றாங்க ஓகே பாலாஜி பிள்ளை எந்த பேட்ச்ன்னு ஏதோ கேக்குறாங்க फ्रेंड्स சார் கூட நினைக்கிறேன் मोस्टலி பாருங்களா எனக்கு பார்க்கறேன் ஓகே நோ அண்ட் கோமன் கவர் தி ஃபீல் ஹேட் டு டு சாங்கி சீட் அப்ஸ் வாட் அந்த சாந்தி மேடம் ஓகே 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 நம்ம ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பேட்ச் நான் ரொம்ப I think she is listening to this uh, conversation. Okay. Ma'am, uh, I am 2009 to 11 batch. So, I mean like... Okay, let's start. Okay, we will start. Uh... Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, kindly, excuse me. Uh, okay, without... Okay, sir, let's start. Let's give it a start. Okay. Um... Okay, we we'll wait for some time. Uh, sir? Mm, there's a 2 minutes la we got a lot of uh, participants mm-hmm. on yeah yeah எனக்கு <laughs> 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 
ஒன்பது destination for your goal Nanda a place where you can fulfill your dreams thank you thank you bolaji okay let me start this webinar program so first uh, good morning one and all present here first uh, i would like to on behalf of nanda college of physiotherapy and on behalf of alumni association i would like to welcome our uh, chief guest resource person alumni mpt 2019 batch uh, dr balaji gunasegaran who is now currently working in singapore as a pt associate in saint uh, all saint home i heartily welcome you apology uh, sir for this program i welcome you sir and next i would like to welcome our principal sir p manivanan sir for this uh, webinar program i welcome you sir and also i welcome all the hods all the staffs students and students of other colleges and all the delegates from the world so i heartily welcome you sir uh, welcome you madam for all uh, attending this webinar program once again i welcome you all for this program and one more thing i want to introduce my neuro department staff uh, first one is uh, uh, 
चित्रा देवी मैडम मैडम हाय सर हार्टी वेलकम टू आवर इंस्ट्रक्शन देन चननी मैडम हाय सर वेलकम यू सर and then nivedita madam good morning sir welcome you to this webinar sir and thank you thank you alma and then uh, next i would like to uh, welcome our principal sir for addressing the gathering welcome you sir thank you ujara sir uh, respected person of today's function baji and yes, uh, organizer of today's function dr vijay raj hod neuro department as well as alumni president of nanda college of physiotherapy and uh, the co organizers chitra devi ma'am janani ma'am and uh, ma'am all the hod's delegates from various places our alumni and dear students good morning to one and all so uh, this is a sixth webinar in our series and the webinar series is the sixth but it's very special it's always special when our students our alumni became a resource person or chief guest it's it's always pleasure to us to welcome dr balaji gunasekar once again all saints from singapore we will we are closely associated with from 2009 till now he shows the same love care respect always i love you balaji for uh, your uh, overwhelming thanks so much with me thank okay you, next i thanks appreciate to hod the organizer chitra ma'am janani ma'am and nivedita and supported by gopal for overwhelming response i think it's a 600 registration last day itself so it's a very good response and also i thank i take this opportunity to thank the delegates for continuous support for all our webinar to become a grand success one thanks this opportunity to the organizer thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, next i would like uh, uh, today's first person to share his knowledge i welcome you balaji okay. welcome you welcome okay. dear okay. okay okay let's start right okay fine thank you so much um, yes i'll start my video okay uh, please excuse me i'm at my home hi uh, it's really pleasure to meet you all thank you so much sir all your words and your blessings counts i'm really happy to be a resource person uh, the thing is uh, it's really a tough job uh, to be a teacher or a professor uh, it's really uh, easy to work as a therapist but uh, it, it it takes challenges because like you're giving we are the phase we are the phase of your teaching sir so with that honor without any further delay we are jumping into the topic yes i'm going to mute my uh, i mean like i'm going to cut my video uh, today we are going to talk about uh, every uh, this one is otago exercise and uh, i'm working in singapore uh, since 2014 and uh, i'm working in the geriatric setup where uh, we see clients or patients who is aged from 60 until 90 the maximum uh, the maximum age limit of treating the patient is 100 yes uh, the life span is uh, really high in singapore so physiotherapy play a vital ro- vital role in um, uh, treating the patients okay during the session if you have any voice disturbance if it's breaking please stop me and let's uh, jump into the topic straight away okay right um vijayra sir uh, throughout the session i need your support please let me if uh, if there is any break or you cannot see the uh, sure 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 okay 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 <clears throat> otago exercise so today we are going to uh, speak about otago exercise this is going to be more on uh, practical and i'll be talking deep in uh, assessments so uh, why i'm going to concentrate on assessment is Uh, uh assessment is a tool where you can check whether your modality 
let it be therapy or exercise or your electrical any whatever it is whether this modality is applicable to the patient and uh, what is the outcome of your treatment whether it's uh, uh, getting benefited to the patient so uh, it's always to have uh, it's 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 best to have an assessment so we will concentrate more on the assessment part and i'll present this uh, exercise basically so otago exercise this was um, uh, derived in uh, new zealand and they started to do this for elderly patients why to basically prevent fall so we are all in a age group where we age from uh, if the if a younger student uh, first year student uh, ranges 21 and any clinical uh, senior therapist will be 55 so i hope in this group there will be age uh, group from 21 to 55 or 50 plus so what i assume is uh, there won't be any balance issues or any muscle weakness for us we are normal human adults for example if we have our grandparents in our home if some of our parents itself if they are like above 60 yes definitely there is a muscle weakness there there will be some balance disturbances so what you are going to say is you can give this exercise for the elderly irrespective of their condition uh, they they don't have to have any stroke or parkinsons or any ataxias this is for the normal elderly people why we do this exercise to uh, improve their strength to improve their balance to make them functionally active to do their adl activity so that is where a therapist should work Uh, sir is the speed is okay sir uh, yeah 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 okay okay okay, okay. so we are going to uh, talk about otago exercise over the further delay will jump into it so this is basically to prevent a fall in elderly uh, patients so above 65 fall is so common uh, for example like uh, uh, okay uh, when, a, when a fall can be simple it it will just uh, Uh, what is a fall it's this is the definition it's an unplanned descent to the floor or other lower level with or without injury when a fall without an injury it's still fine uh, okay but when it is bad you, you can't uh, you can't make the sequences like it can be a, it, it will lead to a hip fracture or any bony fracture it can cause you hematomas that will uh, uh, become a tr- uh, brain injury it give you cuts in muscle or it may affect the nerve sometime the fall is uh, worse it will cause death how bad it is so fall definitely what a pt can do what a physio can do as a physiotherapist we can prevent fall so we, in this presentation we'll see how yes so uh, this strategy uh, this talks about uh, singapore elderly population up to 70 people in singapore are still active this is really amazing sir so that's why physiotherapy should be like uh, it's 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 important i mean you cannot take uh, pts out of the uh, uh, the medical system here because uh, it is it is it has to be done with the, that that is a big topic we'll talk some other time so this fall risk increases with the age so in singapore they say above 70 there is a lot of fall so up to 70 imagine the life span is until 90 years 80 is a normal average uh, uh, life span whereas in india it's still in our places 70 75 is considered a high age so uh, from age of 60 and above uh, the fall risk is high uh, in singapore uh, is is a one of the elderly population country there is a lot of out of out of 10 uh, they say like 6 uh, and above is elderly out of 10 total population imagine like what? there is seven elderly population that's why there is a lot of therapists here and this falls yes it can be prevented so why we are talking about as i said previously falls is really dangerous so it can be prevented so totally what we are going to see in this exercise program is it's going to what is basically composed of uh, it it comprises of uh, the leg muscle strengthening by uh balance exercise and your strengthening exercise that's what it says we are going to give some strengthening exercise with ankle weights we can see later and we will do some balance exercise so the studies upon this otago exercise has definitely showed some uh, improvement why i'm selecting this topic this is a basically simple exercise like end of the session you you might think oh this is very simple but the thing is the effect it has it has proven us it's like 
you can imagine it's far beyond the expectation it has really shown improvement i myself was involved in this project in 2016 and uh, we 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 conducted a study across our rehab center like 80 80 patients in a batch we we treated them in a group uh, therapy we treated them in a group therapy like uh, uh, 10 patients in a group and we had two therapists to monitor we did it. we did this so that's why i'm so happy to share this uh, knowledge so what are all the exercise is in otago it's uh, uh, what what it does it this exercise will improve the balance and strength so by improving balance and strength along with the regular exercise so we conducted this exercise for four months four months uh, thrice a week so totally uh, like uh, monday wednesday friday that was our schedule and uh, they they attended this program for only 4 months after after that they will continue as a home exercise but this has reduced their fall the the day one when they came their muscle was weak uh, we did some assessment in which some of the components they they, they couldn't meet at end of the session even at the mid of the session when we do a reassessment uh, th- there was a lot of uh, changes in their function so uh, okay while doing this exercise uh, the client will achieve some goals right you will uh, treat them with a the short term goal uh, when they achieve the goal as a therapist we should challenge them for example if you are walking uh, if there is a stroke resident if you are walking them for 20 meters once they achieve this 20 meters as a therapist we should challenge them for 50 meters or at least 40 meters double the strength or at least 30 meters so we need to keep on challenging until they 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 try to get normal or near normal so that is where it come and uh, one of the examples is like <clears throat> tandem stands uh, reverse walking or backwards walking which will be seen in further as i said uh, we need to uh, challenge the uh, exercises so progress exercise uh, difficulty the uh, when we progress the exercise difficulty which means like for example if you are giving a 10 kg dumbbell and uh, if the patient is able to do it uh, without any uh, resistance power Uh, and you can add some more weights so it will improve the strength it will in, uh, indirectly improve the balance mm-hmm. uh, so uh, that's what i said uh, you need to increase the ankle weights and the level of difficulty for example if you are doing 10 repetitions increase the next session as 15 repetitions uh, and also you should consider the age so just make it like uh, 15 then 20 so we'll just keep it in between and uh, all the four months it's not necessary you need to do all the same exercise if you have any modification if you have any experience on your own definitely you can have your input but follow this outline the otago exercise that that is that is what this program comprises of once again i'll summarize it up uh, we will strengthen the lower leg muscles mainly the lower leg muscles uh, and the core muscles we'll see uh, for the session and it will strengthen it will uh, give you balance this will reduce the fall risk and uh, we need to challenge the exercise during the four month or like uh, during the sessions we'll see later okay we we'll go to the next slide okay uh, yes when the patient is there you cannot do exercise right there will be any danger sign so initially when the patient does this strengthening exercise there will be some initial muscle stiffness like uh, claudications or like uh, any uh, cramps Uh, then the thing is like we need to do it active range of motion we just do without weights initially you do it an uh, uh, arom so it's like active range of motion yes this is fine but when there is dizziness when there is giddiness or when there is a chest pain or any shortness of breath or any muscle pain it's typically elicited pain during the activity stop the session it means the the patient is in a danger zone the dizziness it can be caused due to hypotension students uh, uh, any if if any students is watching the session uh, i would rec- I, i i kindly request you to have a notebook or pen you can just note some of the terms key terms and you can just have a review later so this dizziness is it can be caused by postural hypotension this is a great topic uh, so you should know what is postural hypotension what are the uh, uh, position we should uh, avoid for example when you are treating a stroke patient or if if he is having any hypertension or hypotension when you put him from bed to the sitting of the edge of the bed like from lying to sitting definitely he will feel giddy you know 
So uh, that is really uh, something worse a therapist can do. So we should know, uh, that's why we should uh, read the medical records, we should assess them, we should assess, assess the balance, then you know all the symptoms. So we will talk more about the assessment. And uh, chest pain, again, uh, this uh, it, it can be uh, simple as a difficulty of breathing, or it can be a cardiac condition. So we should know about the cardiac condition of the patient. Then shortness of breath, again, uh, there can be any um, uh, disturbances uh, <coughs> in the lung function. So we should know if he has any lung condition or he, he or uh, she has any uh, associated uh, lung and cardiac conditions. Muscle pain, if there is any cramps or if there is any sharpness or if there is any tightness, try, try uh, please assess before doing all this exercise. Once, if there is no any of the symptoms, yes, uh, therapist is good to go with this Otago exercise. Are we clear? Yes. I hope you are clear. Okay. And uh, before doing this exercise, uh, uh, we need to do all the uh, regular PT assessment, as in like soap notes, uh, subjective, objective, your range of motions, uh, your muscle power, your coordination, tone, uh, and joint position sense. You will do all this and uh, you will uh, come, across, come across all your short-term, long-term goals. When you categorize for this, this specific program, Otago exercise is, is a general program for elderly. If there is any elderly, like if they, even if they don't have any condition, yes, you can treat them. You can just say this is a strengthening and balance training. So, uh, you should screen them uh, for fall risk. Uh, this is bit, technically, it's an assessment. I'll show you this. And can you see this? Uh, kindly zoom in because I couldn't get this image. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. We are seeing this, right? So this is the FRAT, uh, which is the fall risk assessment tool. Uh, there is a lot of skills. Uh, it depends. Uh, it's, it's used in various hospitals. Uh, uh, for fall risk assessment. So technically there is five questions. Uh, students, uh, final year students, and uh, like mm, so you can you can ask, you can uh, have a look about, on this specifically. There is a fall risk assessment too. Specifically for Otago, we do, the, we do this assessment. So what it has is five components. The five component is like, uh, before doing this, uh, before doing the first session, we have to fill all this. Uh, you can read this upper part later. So we have five components, right? If there is any three components is positive, or yes, the patient is high fall risk. So what are the five components? There is any of his, any history of fall previous years. If no, it's good. And uh, if the patient is taking any medication for any condition, uh, they would have taken for any degeneration, they have taken tablets for their hypertension, and that will make them giddy. So, uh, if yes, you can mark it as yes. No, it's no. So, uh, likewise, we have five questions. If they have any Parkinson's or stroke, and if the patient have any problem with her balance, some of them like generally have balance like weak, just muscle uh, muscle weakness can cause balance, or just a <clears throat> limb discrepancy can, excuse me, <clears throat> cause balance, right? Imbalance. So uh, we need to fill this. So while filling this, if if the patient is a positive for more three or more than three, yes, they are definitely have high fall for risk. These are the patient you should treat with the contact guard assist. Uh, you can uh, do one to one. Uh, all the clinical therapists you need to do one to one uh, session. If uh, if they haven't met any of this, and if they for <clears throat> if they don't have any of this condition, or if they have only two of this. Uh, they are uh, not uh, high risk for the fall. So this is the fall risk assessment tool, FRAT. Uh, you can just have a look on it later. Yeah, I'll share this with uh, Dr. Vijay sir. So why need to, why we need to uh, do the screening? Uh, this is to um, give a picture about your patient. So these are all the five questions. <clears throat> if you have any fall previous years, uh, how many fall? So we need to know how many times he or she had a fall. Uh, then if she or he had four or more medication, actually three, uh, three is, uh, I'm sorry about it. This is three. If, if they are on three medication, it's not a normal, uh, uh, the medication uh, will make them giddy, right? So we need to get the account of it. So that we know if, if he or she has any condition. And again, 
uh, we need to check whether they have any previous or previous uh, diagnosed by stroke or Parkinson's. And we need to assess if they have any problem. It's just a questionnaire. It's a questionnaire. And it can be recorded from the balance, uh, from the medical records. And if, uh, we need to check whether the patient is able to stand up from the chair. Okay, uh, we know the chair in a clinic, not a low chair, a normal ergonomic chair. We need to check whether the patient is able to raise from the chair without any support. Right? Okay, let's go. Okay, so how a session? Now we are going to jump into the session. Uh, okay, uh, uh, during this uh, <clears throat> session, I'm going to show one, one exercise for each, uh, ex uh, one practical session for each exercise. It'll be better if you are doing in, uh, in your place. Uh, it's, it's just simple, right? So uh, initially when you start the session as an otago, uh, you can have a, if you have a, uh, if you are attending any, any group in a community or in a clinic, you can, you can ask the patients, uh, two or three patients together. If it's not fine, uh, if you are attending if any clinical therapist uh, are doing um, house visits, you can, you can still do one-to-one. -one. I, I, I recommend uh, uh, Ananda Physio Department to, to try this uh, as a trial. It's, it's, it's a trial uh, for elderly uh, who come for the clinic. Uh, so this is the format. So 10 minutes, you need to give an introduction. It's, a, it's mandatory. So it's mandatory that you should uh, explain to the patient what, what is the mode of therapy? What are you trying to do to them? It is the patient's right to know what is what is what is what have been done to them it is their right that's what a standard uh, a pt rule says the patient should know what is the therapy is do, uh, done to him what the benefit it will it will be gained so it's our duty so that what happens is like you will get, you build a rapper with a patient you know the patients are the best promoters they will promote you i went to nanda college oh the therapists they are awesome so so your patients are your main promoters. So talk to your patients, gain a confidence, build a relationship, treat them as a, as, as a doctor, uh, uh, principals, uh, must, uh, when you went and say, the love and care should be there. That is what physiotherapy is about. It's, it's love and care. So, uh, okay. Uh, we should uh, give an introduction about this exercise and we should know, uh, we should tell them what is the exercise they are having. Never mind, even if they are educated, non-educated, try to explain them. It, it's their basic right. Then uh, we'll be doing five minutes of flexibility warm-up exercise, 30 minutes of strengthening exercise. This plays a major role. Uh, warm-up with flexibility exercise to stretch the joint. Strengthening exercise where you really train your muscles. Balance exercise, 10 minutes. So like uh, we can stick to this. Uh, if you want, you can, uh, you can extend. Uh, like uh, eight minutes, not more than that. So warm up is basically like uh, keep it like less than eight minutes. Strengthening, yes, of course. If if it's elderly patient, like if they cannot uh, do it for thirty minutes, just do it for twenty minutes. Twenty is ideal for strengthening because we are going to concentrate more on the ankle, leg, and uh, uh, more on walking and balance exercise. Ten minutes. Then again, why I said uh, warm up is why because we will be doing the same exercise at last. So we'll keep it like total 10. So this is the entire session. This is how it goes. Uh, Vijay sir, is it okay sir? My my speed, speed is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Balaji. You're going very good. No okay. problem. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And that's the introduction part. Now we are going to do some flexibility exercise. Okay. Uh, I'll be happy if whoever watching is I want you to do all this, okay? Um, no, fine. So this is just uh, all this exercise, uh, students. You can you can make a note on it. Anyway, you're going to get this PowerPoint. So this is all this flexibility exercise. It's it's going to warm up and cool down your joints, okay? This is going to be fun. You know, uh, elderly people talking about. Uh, imagine it's about sixty. I can give you one best example. <laughs> I used to have some memories with, you know the. Uh, there is a shop opposite of Ananda College, right? There is a uncle, uh, the shopkeeper. We used to eat chapati and prata from the shop. You, you can ask us if any therapist is going there. Just look his posture. If he's like, if he is, if you have a rounded shoulder, if he, if he's fine, it, it's okay. If if there is any elderly view, see, 
you can see them their posture is not straight you know the normal posture right the posture should be head should be on the shoulders like the head making a triangle the he head on the neck like this shoulder should be here and the head is here so we call it as head on shoulders but when we see in the elderly this will be this alignment will be totally gone so as a therapist we are going to put it on on that place we are trying to put them back so what we need to do is uh, these are all the exercise we start with the head movement so turning to the right and left right uh, so we do this five times this is warm up exercise so we will not uh, do much numbers and some more it is for the head and we are, we are going to do for the elderly age group so we'll go with the less number so first is the exercise is head exercise what it will do is it will stretch all your neck muscles your sternum your scalenes and it, it so we are just doing a active warm up so the next exercise is your chin tuck in tuck out so what you are going to do is normally like see nowadays we are sitting in front of laptop you are using mobile people stop extending the neck to be frank and in, in uh, everywhere like you, the most of the time you are in the mobile right you never look at your sky and you ne you are never looking at the ceiling that, that has in in future like maybe after a decade therapist will address only this neck problem vijay sir this is going to be definitely we will be doing this in future sir after yes, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> people are like watching the mobile all the time <laughs> they're going like flexion right the extensor muscle is totally gone so this flexibility exercise will put the head back on the position so you will do this chin tuck five times this is a warm up exercise uh, so a flexibility exercise then uh, <clears throat> you are going to stand uh, uh, after this assessment so i'm just explaining what are all the exercises that you will be doing okay so uh, this is another exercise after this chin tuck and turning exercise we will be stretching the back no matter if the elderly cannot do i mean like if they cannot stand up and do you can assess them therapists can stand on the side you can ask them to stretch the spine this is one of the best exercise that will uh, improve the flexibility in the, in the spine and again you need to do this five times uh, remember this is all flexibility exercise that should be done uh, uh, at the post of, of the co exercise and then this is a trunk movement and uh, if you want me to show i can i can demo any one of this thing for you it's a simple exercise but see this is all uh, derived as otago we would have been thinking right this is this is all like a uh, simple exercise but uh, these are all the collective exercise and they termed as otago and they, they, they physio that's what i'm it's an example of what i'm trying to say is like physiotherapy is simple it's it's like it's how to say uh, yeah in, um, okay uh, philosophy later we'll go into the topic so there is a trunk movement uh, we need to stand with the hip uh, with the shoulder width apart so this is for the trunk um, okay i'm trying to do something here sorry bro head master Uh, can you see the slide, sir? No, sir. Visible, visible. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, we are talking about this uh, flexibility, right? So this is a oh. trunk. This is nice. I, I thought of showing some video demo also, sir. That's why. <laughs> okay. 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 Please excuse me. I'm at my home and not in my clinic. Okay. See, uh, so uh, this is basically uh, one of the flexibility exercise, right? So it will be interesting. I don't want to uh, keep it like theory. So how how we do this uh, trunk flexibility exercise is you are asking the patient to stand at the shoulder width apart, and this is literally turning the trunk. Your hip stays stable. so it's it's mainly for the trunk so when you're standing like this you ask the patient to turn right and left so you will do this five times so i i just want to make it interactive uh fine okay 
Okay. So, uh, this is how we should uh, do a flexibility exercise. It's simple, but it's still effective for elderly. This is five times. So, we have, uh, see, so far it's like turning the head uh, and then uh, stretching the back and uh, uh, extending the, I mean, arching your back. And the next is, yes. Uh, we are going to do these ankle movements. If everyone is sitting and if you're willing to do, stretch your leg. Let's do this because you're sitting for uh, 30 minutes, right? Stretch your right leg, move your uh, ankle up and down 10 times, like one, two, three. I'm, I'm, I'm rushing it. Just do it as a second, okay? Like one, two, three, four, five. It's just an ankle movement, uh, ankle toe movement. This is a flexibility exercise. All right. That's it. That's your flexibility exercise. So uh, before and after the session, you will be doing this flexibility exercise. So why? This will relax your muscles. It will stretch your muscles. Okay, here. Now we are going to jump into the strengthening exercise. Things we needed and what are the uses. So why strengthening muscles? Because we saw this otago is to prevent fall. So what are all the uh, uh, areas or aspects where the elderly will fall? It's like a, especially transfer if they are like going into a room or walking staircase or they are like stepping into another place um, or like transfer example, like from chair to the floor or like or getting into a bus. Uh, okay, we are uh, let's, let's put this situation in our country. Okay, imagine like there is an elderly auntie or uncle or a patient who, who need to come to your uh, therapy department. Imagine it's not that. So they need to climb the stair, staircase. Like we have three steps, right? For the department. Then they need to sit on the chair. They need to climb onto the couch. So these are all the places of transfer. So for transferring, as an elderly, they need a strong, strong muscle. So uh, this strengthening exercise, uh, the muscles we're targeting will, will, <clears throat> will be used for the transfer from surfaces like chat to uh, floor and chat to uh, like staircase walking and sit to stand. Imagine they are sitting in a floor or like in a low sofa. You know how, how bad it is for an elderly to stand up. Now we are really like, see, everyone is going to age, right? So uh, uh, I, I've, been I've been in this geriatric field for almost like six years. And uh, I know, I mean like, uh, Everyone, um, most of the clinical therapists would have seen them, right? So they will say it's really hard to stand up. Of course, it's a human cycle. So uh, as a therapist, we, we play a vital role for them. So, <clears throat> and when you do this, you improve their walking. Imagine uh, you can increase their life. This is what exactly, you can increase their lifespan. You can increase their uh, activities of daily living. That's what therapists do. You should, you should, you should, you should in, improve the quality of life. Elderly is not to sit and, uh, and, 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 and deteriorate. Therapists will increase the function, increase, uh, uh, increase the, uh, the quality of living. That is what this, this three concerns. Your strengthening exercise will improve the transfers, will uh, improve the standing, sit to standing, getting up from bed, walking, and it will recover the balance. So uh, we all have this ankle weights, right? Ankle weights is one of the best um, simple equipment. You can do a lot. Uh, so initially, uh, we saw all this uh, flexibility exercise with five reps, right? There is no uh, uh, five counts each with no repetitions. Whereas for the strengthening exercise, yes, we will have a number of sets and we have repetitions. So uh, I want you to concentrate for this. You can apply this for another exercise also. So we will have two sets of 10 reps, which will be 20 moments with a short rest. Okay. So initially when you start and later after in a month or after like four sessions, technically four sessions. Uh, so after like 12 sessions, uh, you can increase the weight. You need to increase the weight. For example, if you start this exercise with half kg or half pound, please increase this resistance. So that shows that you're, you're, give, you're training the muscle slowly, but you're training the muscle uh, in a higher, quite strength. This is for the geriatric population. 
And when 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 you when you are doing the strengthening exercise, we should address the correct posture and breathing technique. Breathing is most important. In the morning, there was a uh, share. Uh, uh, there was a sharing about breathing, and we are in this pandemic situation. Please do a deep breathing exercise for ourselves. And uh, while doing any kind of exercise, not only what I do, when you do any kind of exercise, enhance breathing. This will this will enhance. Uh, more improvement out of it. so no need to hold the breath so if you, if you ask them to breathe it will sustain their energy this will uh, improve their strength and uh, as i said we need to perform it gently smoothly have a smooth uh, uh, full rom range of motion and for example i'm going to show you again <coughs> um So when you when when you when you try to ask the patient to lift the leg, don't ask to do this. No, okay. What you're going to do is ask them to raise the leg like one, two, three, four. Then low when lowering down. Imagine I'm tying an ankle weight which is like uh, two kilo. I can uh, tolerate two kilo, right? So when I lift, it should be in this speed, like lower it down, like slowly all the way down. Okay. Uh, this is still a, a wrong chair, but still up there. I should be in an ideal height. So again, I'm lifting up. Right. So when lowering down, it should be like one, two, three, four. Lifting up is like one, two. Lowering like one, two, three, four. You can get the speed. So this will come upon sessions. Um, yeah. Excuse me. And uh, we're talking about the strengthening exercise, right? That's what I said. So perform it slowly, uh, enhance the correct breathing technique, and always stick to the right posture. And if you, if you need, you can give a rest between the sets. Because it's a strengthening exercise, definitely there will be a lot of effort. Uh, when you try this on your elderly, if there is any students or any pra uh, clinical practitioners, you can try this with your parents at home. It's really hard, you know. The, the, our, our, all our patients will listen to us. Our parents will not listen to us. <laughs> I'm facing this challenge. Okay. Okay. This is one of the strengthening exercises. We start with, uh, the thing is, like, don't jumble the exercise. Uh, we will start uh, in, in the same format, okay? And you're going to have ankle weights, uh, uh, clinical therapists like uh, you, you can have the ankle weights uh, in colleges and institutions. They they have uh, they can afford right. Uh, they can afford weights like one one point five two, it can be the maximum. So you can have like uh, four pairs or something like that. So you can use it. Uh, of course, we can use it for our, uh, for other patients also, right? So we can have more of manual dumbbells and ankle weights rather than. Uh, any electrical modalities. I'm not against electrical modalities, but I'm still saying. So this will be helpful and useful. Sandbag or ankle weights, by a technical ankle weights. So as I said, uh, this exercise, when, when taught in a clinic, uh, you will do it. When you're asking uh, it, uh, for the home th therapy, you can ask the patient to do while watching TV or, or during their uh, any leisure time. So uh, we need to tie to your ankle. Uh, so sitting with the chair, your back should be straight, your back support, right? See, the trunk is straight. It's not like slouching or they're not in any wrong position. See the head, see the neck, head down, shoulder. Can you see this? The ear, the shoulder, and the hip is in a straight line. So this is a perfect posture. And if you see the hip, the knees it should be 90. Right, so that uh, so that's where your 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 strength. I mean, your your training the strength for your quads, right? So uh, the line is here. Imagine if she is quite. I mean, like if she's sitting too low, then the angle is reduced, or if she's slouching, this this is not going to work. So that's where a therapist is needed. So as we said, we'll do this ten times, two repetitions. So totally, they will do twenty. Initially, we can start with uh, 0.5 kilos, like 500 grams. Of course, like, yeah, if they are elderly, yes, it depends upon their strength again. 
So this is uh, knee strengthening exercise. And then again, this is a bending exercise. So, okay, we have a technique. Uh, that's what I, I want to say. So first we start with this. Second one is we are going to do this exercise. When doing this, see there is a, the patient holds here. Okay, the patient is holding and strengthening the back of the thigh. This one will strengthen his hams and his uh, hips, glutes. Okay, so initially he need to stand straight. Huh? Don't ask the patient to slouch. He should uh, have a correct position, and uh, we are strengthening the back knee, which is like hamstrings and glutes. Again, the set is like uh, ten set, uh, ten repetitions and two sets. And now uh, the same ankle weight. Uh, see, we have uh, so far we have seen uh, two, right? This is the third exercise, which we will uh, strengthen the side hips, your uh, uh, TFLs, glutes, and uh, your leg muscles in the side, which is the abductor, right? Uh, yeah, this is again the patient is doing all this with the support. Right, so when with the therapist there, you you won't allow this pelvic to tilt. Yeah, so they should do this with the therapist so supervision. Of course, uh, this is a part of program, right? Again, all this all this exercise should be done on both legs, right and left. Okay, don't switch in between. So initially, two sets on the right leg, two sets on the left leg for the uh, for raising the knee. <coughs> Excuse me, bending the knee. Also with the right leg and the left leg, side hip strengthening to those abductors, right also in the left leg. Okay, this is for illustration. We are we are seeing only one stitch. And now uh, the heel raises, which is called the calf raises, uh, we'll do this twenty times without an ankle weight. The the other exercise uh, we use the ankles here. The body weight is in resistance. So see, there is two exercises, right? So there is a difference. Can you see? Can anyone see? So initially, we'll do this for the first session. We'll do this without a support. Can you see? The patient does this without a support. You can do this after two or three sessions when the patient is confident doing this exercise initially. And the support should be with one hand. That's what we are trying to say. We need to supported with minimal assistance. Can you see there is one hand support? Uh, for this one, they can still use. Uh, if they are good enough, they can use one hand support. So uh, concentrate here. Again, standing tall, head up, correct posture, feet with the shoulder width apart, and now raising the heels. Okay. So this is a strengthening exercise for the calf. Uh, this will strengthen your gastro. Then progression after two session, two or three session, ask them to do this heel raises without a support. Can you see the auntie doing it? So incredible, right? Yeah. We are still in strengthening exercise. These are all the strengthening exercise. So technically, uh, uh, after the heel raise should be the toe raises. Okay, we'll be doing it for twenty times. So these are all uh, uh, will, in, uh, will strengthen your front knee, uh, uh, leg muscles. So initially, initially don't ask them to do this. First two to three sessions, let them get trained on this. Then you can progress here. Definitely there will be a progression if the client has no underlying condition. Okay, that's it with your strengthening exercise. So uh, it's strengthening your quads and gas Trucks, right? Okay, why balance exercise? Yes, uh, uh, now we are on the third part. Third part is that initially uh, we start with the onto support, right? So, what is this? So, uh, we should observe for the body strategy and uh, we need to proceed exercise without the support. So, while doing this uh, exercise, please, therapist should be with the, with the patient. If, if you have any assistant, uh, like when you do in a department, you can have one uh, one therapist or like one student or one internees uh, 
for a patient once your patient is like learning all these things then you can do it under supervision okay the onto support is like contact guard assist either you can stand near or you can just have a hand on the patient okay right try to use the gate belt for better support so you need to uh, you, need, you really need to know about this balance about the about your about the hips knees and ankle whether the patient have the strategy okay students i got some uh, technique uh, i mean like uh, a word for you uh, there is a strategy for balance uh, okay <laughs> it's not a what to say it's not a task but it will be really interesting read about the balance strategy there is lot of strategy that is uh, in the human body that will prevent us from falling okay i'll say uh, this is this is for the spinal students uh, read about ankle strategy hip strategy and stepping out strategy there is five strategies basically in our body but we we for pt aspect we read three uh, i request students about this uh, hip uh, strategy balance strategy okay that's what you are uh, seeing over there okay coming back to that so we should know what is the strategy the elderly is in usually the elderly uh, would have uh, compensated this uh, strategy they will not have much strong hips like we have we are strong enough somebody push you you can withstand the force right uh, I, i'll just show you what is it okay uh, what what is the strategy okay wait a minute okay Uh, you see me here. Uh, uh, this is this is just for uh, academic purpose. Uh, I'm going to show you three stra strategy. Right? Uh, there is an ankle strategy. The thing is, when you stand. Okay. Uh, uh, what I do is, uh, I request uh, whoever is interested, you can just stand up on your place. close your eyes and you feel your ankle movements just feel what's happening at your ankle i hope you all will do this it's simple it's not practical there is no there's that's not going to be any question answer i just want you to feel what is the strategy since we start talk about it it will be helping you right so i'm going to show you uh, the hip and uh, stepping out strategy i'll show you but please read this i advise the students to uh, have some uh, investigation about this uh, i'll just show oh, what is the strategy this will prevent us from falling okay uh, students you can stand now i mean like participants dear participants please stand up on your place okay close your eyes feel the movement uh, or feel anything at your ankle joint i mean like i want you to put your hands at the side Ankle. Your ankle is there is a force that is contracting both in front and back of your ankle that makes you stand. This is a strategy. This is a this is a physiological strategy of your body. This is a balance strategy. One that is called ankle strategy. I'm not going to deep. I'm just interested. There is a hip strategy. So when there is when there is a larger perturbation, when there is a force like if I'm going in the bus. you know if i'm going in the bus this hip will work this will prevent me from falling if somebody is pushing me from the back from the back see okay so imagine like somebody is pushing me from the back can you see my my torso is going forward this is limbo my torso is going forward my hand is extended and my my stand is there my stand is straight so this is a hip strategy the hip the hip will prevent you fall so we do exercise to strengthen our leg and the hips so this is hip strategy when somebody pushes you from the front can you see so uh, my trunk is extended my hands are going forward okay right and the third strategy is stepping strategy see when there is a when there is a larger perturbation body will contract with stepping one leg see when when the force is harder can you see this yeah. so 
initially red, then the here. Okay, similar. So I didn't move this. I didn't move this leg. Uh, automatically, I mean, my body contracted the force with a stepping strategy. So uh, I just want our dear students to excuse me. <coughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want to mention this three strategy that uh, improves your balance. That that is essential for your balance. When you are treating patients for balance, you need to work on the ankle strategy, hip strategy, and a stepping strategy. Right? Okay. That is that was out of topic. Okay. Uh, let's come to the second point. So we need to observe ob observe the patient strategy, uh, how it's uh, it's uh, whether it's weak or not. Then you need to work on it. Okay, yeah, 2.30. So, okay, and then um, we need to uh, look at, <coughs> while doing these exercises, we need to look straight and uh, we need to do this adjustment. And while doing the balance exercise, like how we did the strengthening exercise with increasing the weight, uh, we will increase and uh, <coughs> reduce the balance, uh, like the support, why the versus narrow and holding the hands or like holding with one fingers. See, that's what all this balance exercise. You need to, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you need to uh, challenge the exercise. Okay, we, we will be rushing it soon. Sorry for it. Okay, so these are all the balance exercise. Can you see? Uh, they're doing this uh, knee bends like squats. While doing squats is still essential. You don't let the patient's knee be on your foot. Uh, like if, uh, okay, squat halfway beyond your knees. For elderly, we can still do this because like they cannot do a perfect squatting, right? So oh, they will do the squatting with the support after two, three sessions, if they're confident to do it and if they got strength, you can advance to this. Again, the times is like 10 and uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 repetitions and two sets, right? Okay, we'll, we'll uh, Go through. Next is backwards walking, which is one of the best exercise that will stimulate or it will uh, it will facilitate all your back muscles, anti gravity muscles. Can you see this? You need to ask the patient to walk backwards. Why? It will it will it will uh, strengthen. It will facilitate your uh, muscles. Uh, Postgraduate students, if anybody there, you can just check with the upper cross, lower cross syndrome when there's a higher facilitation of your anti gravity muscles. So there will be a facilitation of one muscles and there will be inhibition of the opposite muscles instead of balancing. So uh, walking backwards is one of the balance exercise. Okay, so it will stimulate all your muscles or anti-gravity muscles. And again, uh, progress without holding a support. Initially, you can ask them to hold the wall or the parapet wall or the side rails in the wall bar. Okay, the, the, the 10 steps. The, the number of uh, the, the number of uh, steps they sh they should walk is like only ten steps. <clears throat> okay, don't don't overdo this because they have a lot of exercise to do. So you just do ten steps so that it's easy for you to measure how many steps they can walk. Uh, at the uh, I mean after like uh, after a month, how how effectively they can walk like this. All right, so they will walk ten steps. Okay, 10 steps at the beginning. So they'll be walking like five to 10 times. Okay, at last, after all this, you will do side walking. Okay, we'll do side walking first. Okay, side walking with the hips, hand on the hips. They'll be walking again 10 steps to the right, 10 steps to the left. This one again will uh, stimulate all this uh, side movements your hips, your abs, your DFL, your leg muscles. After this, let them walk figure of eight. Like you put two cones or you can draw a chart or you can make a mark. Ask the patient to walk in figure of eight. This is one real task uh, to improve the balance. I think we saw this, right? Yeah, backwards walking, yeah. It's coming in, is it? Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Backward steps. 
after this like we will train them to walk heel to toe walking like uh, adi production uh yes uh, we will walk forward and backward in both direction right uh, yes so they will do the heel to toe walking right so this is how they walk uh, initially they should walk with holding the support and progress after four sessions so this is a balance exercise this will be challenging so you wait until the patient have some uh, confidence and they have some strength and then one leg standing again one leg standing with support and without support all these exercise you have to do for both legs right and here comes the last exercise i think uh, yeah heel walking so uh, the hill walking like 10 steps again so we stick to this numbers they will walk with support and without support then again toe walking so this is not reverse okay hill and toe walking you should go forward uh, only the reverse walking and uh, hill to toe walking will be on uh, both directions please stick to this don't do all your own stuffs if you do your own stuff and you can uh, you can document it then again heel to toe ba uh, walking backwards at the last right okay and there is uh, another last exercise that will uh, this will uh, last time when i presented this they were asking whether you are training the core indirectly all this all this exercise have an indirect effect on the core muscle see initially we will ask them to stand up by holding the chair okay uh we'll be doing this five times initially we'll doing five times the because it it is like a four months session right so after like a month we'll be doing it like 10 times okay so then without a support initially with the support then with one hand support so <clears throat> well asking them to stand up you, you can teach them cue sitting on a chair not too low and while standing up ask them to uh, lean forward bring the heels and knees together then push with the hand so we need to teach them so how to stand up for elderly it's it's a more difficult task <clears throat> and then if you see oh sorry and then if you see like uh, it will be standing without the support then start climbing if you have any stairs in your i mean like we have a therapeutic uh, staircase right we can give the training at the home you can use their stairs for this clients and this slide is like when there is a fall uh, for example there is nowadays there is a lot of elderly who is alone at the home so as a home therapy you teach them how to get up you can you can refer to this uh, I'll, i'll share this reference later so uh, you need to ask them to crawl to nearby and get a chair to climb on it and uh, if a therapist are there if you are in a clinic or if somebody's uh, had a fall initially you need to check uh, for the signs and symptoms and the response and if they don't and you need to ask to move their joints like if they sustain the fracture please don't move them because you know the uh, signs right there is swelling or there is pain on movement don't move so you need to just call the ambulance and uh, <clears throat> if there is no pain if there is i mean like if there is no uh, movement restriction just get them on a chair right okay and now we are going to talk in detail about uh, vijay sir are we running out of time sir no problem you okay. can make it oh ah, yeah yeah actually okay, like okay, okay. we are almost at the end of the session we are just going to watch only one video which is going to be 8 minutes and i'll be talking about it so these are all the exercise that is done in otaga exercise basically you start with your flexibility exercise then the strengthening exercise then your balance exercise what we see all now squatting walking sideways walking backwards uh, walking in figure of 8 heel walking toe walking and uh, heel to toe walking like adi production right so after doing exercise how how do you know that the patient has improved that's why we need to assess and we need to have a measurement tool so these are all the four measurement tool we are going to see all in detail okay so uh, for this otago exercise it was recommended a short physical performance battery test which is called sppbt sounds like spb right <laughs> it's sppbt and the 2 minute walk test which is a, which can be an endurance test you know, for elderly we do this because walking a 2 meters actually it's 2 meters i'm sorry i'm sorry 
This is two meter octaves. Sorry. Uh, this is a two meter walk test. And uh, this modified efficacy scale and Nottingham extended scale, it is still a question. So you need to talk to the patient. You can just ask them, uh, students and clinical practitioners who, uh, uh, if, you, if you are trying this, if you want to use this, uh, you can modify according to our country because here uh, the wheelchair can access to the road, to the bus, but in our country cannot, right? So you can modify the scale. For example, in elderly, what we would do in our country is like, uh, if they have garden, they go for gardening. If they are reading the newspaper, they can do. If they are cooking, if they are washing their clothes, these are all the ideal uh, scores. And uh, we'll be seeing in detail. So uh, the short physical performance battery, uh, basically there is three tests in this uh, thing. So we will test the balance. Apart from the PT assessment, this is specifically for the outcome measure. So with this scoring, you can you, you will see whether the patient is improving or not. Okay. So uh, uh, the balance test is uh, like uh, we need to test their balance in tandem stance. Can you see this? We are going to watch a video later uh, so for 10 seconds. Uh, uh, this is for 10 seconds. So we are just seeing the balance test. So how we do? This is three components. And the first component is testing the balance. Uh, if the patient is able to stand for 10 seconds, you will score. Uh, the scoring we'll see later. Uh, uh, and uh, semi-tandem, semi-tandem is half, I mean like legs uh, in a half mid stance <clears throat> for 10 seconds and full tandem stance, heel to, heel to toe stance. So if you see there is like a, for example, if the patient is uh, standing for 10 seconds, you score two points. If the patient is able to stand only between three to nine seconds, the patient can hold the position for three to nine seconds. If you cannot stand until 10 seconds, you score only one. Okay. <clears throat> for example, the patient can stand for only five seconds. You score one. If the patient is able to stand for 8.5 seconds, still he will get the score one. This applies for all. And if it's less than three, if he cannot stand, you score a zero. Okay, the gate speed. Okay, sorry. Gate speed test is the two meter walk test. Uh, you ask the patient to walk from one point to another point, measuring like two meters. Right? Sorry, it's four meters. I'm really sorry. Some confusion. <clears throat> okay, four meters. So the 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 distance, the the time, the time measure is the uh, speed of the patient. For example, if he's walking this four meters at a speed of uh, four seconds, you score four. If between four to six seconds, you score three. If more than eight, you score one. If the patient is not able to walk in, if, uh, if he's using a, a stake or like he cannot walk, just mark the zero. Again, the chat stand test. See, this is a, a third component of this uh, scale. Uh, so uh, they should cross the arm. They should stand from the chair with five times at a high speed. Measure the time required for five raises from a chair in upright position as fast as the patient can. If he's able to do from 11 seconds, within 11 seconds, less than 11 seconds, you score four. If they are taking more than 11 to 13 seconds, you score three. If it's more than 18 to 16 seconds, two, more than 16, Yes, zero, right? Okay, and you can see this modified efficacy scale later. These are all like ideal assessment scale. So while doing this exercises, after like a, a second, after a second, after a month or after the month, when you do a periodic reassessment, we call it reassessment, this course will, you can see improvement. So that shows, it's like a value, that this value shows that your patient has been improved on getting your treatment. How about that? So what are the things is like, uh, we'll be scoring all these 14 components. These are questionnaires like VAS scale. You need to just mark it. Uh, whether they can wear their own dress, whether they can make a simple meal like kanji or whatever, idli or something like that. Whether they can shower on their own, whether they're able to get. So these are all the 14 questions. If you see uh, this, we can, we, can, we can modify according to our, our, our community. So we should have a community uh, study for elderly, if there is a scope. Then, uh, 
Nottingham extended scale again. Uh, we will score if the patient is independent. We will score three. If the patient is doing with the difficulty with the support, we score two. With help, with one person assistance or two person assistance, we score one. If you cannot do, she cannot do. We score zero. For example, this is one example. Okay, let's talk about this kitchen. If if they are able to uh, cook, uh, make a coffee or tea. If we can do alone, we score three. So all this total score uh, will be recorded before the session. After a month, so you will uh, do this assessment again. All the four scales, right? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to show you one more thing, and uh, this is the video. Uh, okay, after this, it it will be uh, it will be ending. I want you to watch. If anybody is watching, uh, please don't watch this. Don't miss this. Uh, kindly excuse me i'm just getting up okay and uh, what we are going to see is a is a short physical performance the, the entire three components okay just a minute thank you thank you mr abora okay uh, Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, uh, dear students, dear participants, uh, sorry, uh, I couldn't get my own assessment video due to PDPA. We call it as a Personal Data Protection Act. And somewhere I don't have any friends here, or else I would have uh, shown you a personal demo. Uh, there is like eight minutes left out. We will see this video and I'll interrupt in between. So we are going to show a short physical performance battery where they are going to assess. Uh, the four, the four meter walk test, the balance test assessment, and the chair race time test. Okay, let's watch it. So this is a demo. You can do this. You can apply this for any balance assessment component. Physical performance battery test or SPPB. The SPPB is a validated tool that Sorry. we can use to assess a patient's level of physical function as well as their future risk for activities of daily living decline. It is a performance-based test and it will take about 10 minutes to administer. Okay, let's begin the evaluation. Um, I'm going to have you standing in a couple different positions. And first I will explain them and show them to you with my feet. And then after you see me doing it, you can get into the position and Ken here will time you. We're going to try to hold these positions for 10 seconds each. So this is an important part. A therapist is addressing the patient and she's going to show herself. She's going to demo the patient because uh, giving instruction is a, it's a vital part. Like when you perceive something, when you say something, it would have been positive and an opposite uh, meaning, right? So that is more important. Okay. Uh, we'll just uh, jump in. Need to step out of the posture to maintain your balance, um, we'll, we'll have to move on to the next section. Okay. So um, when you are standing in the posture, you can move your body and your arms and bend your knees in order to maintain your balance. I mean, she's talking about the strategy. When we do the tandem standing or half standing, there will be perturbations, right? So that's what the therapist is explaining. If you have a tendency to fall, you can balance your body. The thing is we want your feet to stay in place for the 10 seconds. Okay. okay, so let me show you the first um, position that I want you to stand in. And just watch me for a second as I show you, we want your feet next to each other and touching for 10 seconds, okay? okay. Um, do you have any okay. questions before we begin? No. Okay, so let's have you put your feet into this position here. So the patient right. is doing the okay. balance. Ready? I'm ready. All right. begin. And they are recording the time for 10 seconds. So it's able to stand. For 10 seconds. Let's look. So they're scoring one because he held it for 10 seconds. So there is no issue. Then they're going for half semi tandem. Again, the therapist is showing how to do the semi tandem. Uh, the patient is doing the Hold this position for 10 seconds. Need to. Are you, do you have any questions about that posture? No. Okay. So let's have you get into that position. So have a concern with the 
Okay, and so. let's have you move that front foot back about two inches. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Okay, ready and begin. And stop. Great. And you can stand normally. The semi tandem stand is also worth one point if the patient can successfully exactly. hold the position for 10 seconds. And I'll show you the third posture. Uh, uh, sorry for the interruption. There was a lot of questions on the session. Uh, yes, we have a frat. Uh, the question is uh, like objective. Yeah, we'll, we'll have it uh, the last of the session. I'll, uh, I'll address these questions. The third posture is putting the heel of one foot against the toes of the other foot. And once again, you can choose whichever foot you want in the front and in the back. Okay. okay. And you're going to hold this for 10 seconds if possible. And good. Okay, ready, begin. So now it's like heel to toe. Can you see the perturbations at the ankle? The patient is moving the body. They're trying to compensate the fall. Yes. Can you see? This is how an elderly will do. Good. Okay, thank you. So they are... <coughs> He held for 10 seconds and as, as per scoring, scored two. And now gate speed test, which they will walk for four meters. Uh, they will just uh, measure the, uh, the seconds. I mean, like the time, how, how, how long, how, how, how much is the time is taking to walk this? Observe how you normally walk. Um, this is our walk towards the end of the course and past the line without slowing down. Okay. And I'll walk right with you and make sure that you feel safe, okay? Can I show you what I mean? Sure. Okay. So now the therapist is going to demo before the patient is going to walk. So they measured four meters and uh, they are asking the patient to walk from the starting point and they're asking to cross the point, not to stop at the point. Why it means like when at the end, we have the attitude of getting slower, right? So they need to cross the, the mark there, okay? so that we can measure the exact timing required. So on doing this reassessment, after a month, and then after a once again consecutively, we will, we will see definite improvement or else definitely they'll be deteriorating if they cannot do. So this is an outcome measure that whether our therapy is doing, uh, doing some benefit on the patients. See the therapist is walking all the way, she's crossing until here. So the time is measured from the starting point and the when end When you're point. ready, I'll say ready, begin, and we'll have someone timing you when you cross the line. You'll need a timer that go, they can use it. Okay. Behind that uh, line right there. The patient is and getting ready? ready. I'm ready. Good, okay, ready, begin. And the time Just starts now. Timing when the patient begins walking across the line. Stop timing when one of the patient's feet is completely across the line. We'll do this again. All right. Okay. Can you see that? You cannot do it perfectly within one time. You need to have some trials. Like you do it one or two times. Uh, the final year students, we do, uh, you know, the, the uh, three meters walk test, TUG, the time up and go test for assessment. This is for all patients. This is for any stroke or Parkinson's to assess their gait speed, the gait speed and the balance. We use, we do the time up and go test, right? So you need to mark this. Uh, so we are just seeing the gate speed test. We are going to do it once again. So now I want you to repeat the walk and just remember not to slow down as you reach the line, but rather to walk past Exactly. It. And I'll have you line up. And if you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, ready. See the time there? Okay. And uh, started. And the time stops at the line. Since our patient's faster four meter walk was 3.5 seconds, can you see? That's what I mentioned. If he is able to walk less than four for 0.8 seconds. So this is counted. Even the uh, decimeter is counted. <clears throat> Can you see this? Between 4.8 to 6.23. If it's 6.2 to 8.7 seconds, two. I mean, like if the speed is slow, the score will be low. If your speed is high, you will get a high point. Uh, so that's how our outcome measure will measure the patient's efficacy. He received the full four points for this. Let's start with the final portion of our assessment. So this is the chair stand test and uh, they will score it. You see what's happening here. Do you think it would be safe to stand up from this chair without using your arms? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let so uh, no need to force the patient if they are not confident, if they had a fear of fall, uh, even with the assistance. When the patient refused, you can always mention patient refused. So no need to force them. So you can continue the exercise. Once, if you see any changes in their strength, you can uh, continue to uh, do this assessment. Well and fine. Let's have you cross your arms over your chest like this. And can I have you put your feet flat on the floor in front of you? Great, thank you. And go ahead and try to stand up without using your arms. Great, okay, let's sit back down. Stop the test if the patient uses their arms to stand has not completed five rises by one minute or at your discretion if you are concerned for patient safety. Yeah. And now we're gonna have you do that five times in a row as quickly as you can, okay? Okay. Do you think that would be safe? I think so. Okay. And just remember if you feel dizzy or short of breath or don't you don't feel well in any way, let me know and we'll stop, okay? Okay. Great. All right. So let's put your arms over your chest and make sure you keep them in that position during your five stands, okay? So Great. you're asking the patient to do it. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Starts one. One. Two. You see the timing here? Three. Four. Five. There you Great. go, 15 Great. seconds. So. The scoring will be like this. Since our patient's time was 14.96 seconds, he received two points for this section. Use your SPPB guide for the proper scoring. Can you see this? No, he is slow. So this is the part, uh, his uh, strength is weak. So when we do this strengthening exercise, this otaka exercise, he might, he might improve because his other balance is good. He might improve. And he can he can get this thing, so he was he was like medium. He was moderate. He was a bit slow. Okay, okay, all right. That's it. Okay, now I'll just stop sharing and we'll go back to this uh, slides. Okay. I think uh, we are done with almost things. So I've, I've uh, talked about all the scales. So these are all the four scales uh, that will do assessment. So we have seen all this. This is basically the questionnaire. So these are all the references. Uh, I, I personally, I, I was trained for this Otago exercise to conduct this session in my rehab center back in 2014 and until now it has, uh, sorry, 2016, until now uh, it is in a practice and we are doing it for all patients. Even if it's not a, as an otago, I'm still doing some of this exercise to improve their leg strength, to improve their balance. It's not necessary you should do only otago, no. You can take any of this component to strengthen or for the balance exercises. Any questions? Yes, sir, I'm done with my session. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, over to Vijay, sir, Dr. Vijay. Yeah, sir. Uh, thank you, Balaji. It was a nice informative and interactive, interactive session. Okay. So some of them are posted in QA box. Yeah, I will see. Uh, Voice is not first, uh, first one is uh, any objective scale are for the assess assess risk of fail. Yeah, uh, we fall. use the uh, fall risk assessment tool, right? This is for elderly. If you're working in a geriatric in a pediatric setup or a stroke uh, or a neuro setup we can always uh, mr nitin Ayer, thank you for the question uh, yes uh, we have shared a fall risk assessment frat for this uh, geriatric population so we have five, five set of questions uh, as explained uh, uh, before uh, so if the patient uh, meets three or more uh, they are high fall risk yes it's a frat I've answered this, uh, it's a fall risk assessment tool. And uh, it, it can be modified depending upon your area of uh, field. For if sports, there will be different uh, fall risk assessment tool. For pediatric or any neuro concern, it will be a different assessment. So this is for uh, elderly uh, assessment tools. And then next, please demonstrate. demonstrate how, how to get up. 
if the patient on the ground to chair uh, that's what we show a while ago right? uh, yeah yeah uh, so there is a there is a picture uh, been uh, demonstrated uh, you you can you can, actually it's a part of a treatment also when there when a patient is there when there is a stroke patient they are even uh, prone to fall you can always train them how to get up how to roll up on the normal side or how to call for help you can train them uh, the source was there for stroke patient you can still train them on the uh, normal side this uh, we can uh, we can train academically for the students also sir okay shall we able to give otago exercise in form of sir, dance therapy dance. or as a group therapy yes group otago exercise. exercise was a group therapy when we did uh, anonymous attendee <laughs> wow, wow that's okay. nice yes actually uh, otago was a group exercise uh, if you want to uh, give it as a, a dance uh i hope uh, you can go with a metronome uh, you can you can go music in a more therapeutic way yes you can it's a form it's so creative i'll be, i'll be encouraging it uh, but like you can go with uh, like beats you know the metronome beats for the parkinson the music is uh, is one of a cue because they need a lot of verbal cue right so when you have this metronome bath for walking to increase the speed of walking we can just say like okay you take one step with your sound then increase the sound for uh, walking steps likewise for all this uh, thing uh, you can have a uh, uh, how to say the rehab music not uh, too much of uh, westernized or like clumsy moves you can just have it as a nice bright uh, active moves yes it's a good question so. and then can you share the reference slides yeah the reference slide is there it's there that's what uh, it was at the last uh, this is the reference okay sir during the evaluation of sppb can we make patient to stand in bare feet uh bare feet yes if if uh, your if your clinic if your if your platform is uh, stable it, if it's not uh, if it does, if it's not a mat if not a soft foam yes uh, if you can uh, ask them to wear a sh uh, you can assess them in a bare foot but if the patient has any uh, heel condition or like if they cannot uh, you know the ground reaction force sometime will uh, give a uh, stress on the heel and the toes you can ask them to wear a uh, ergonomic shoes or like a normal sandals should be okay or if they are wearing any hard shoe yes you can do it on the bare foot yes and then uh, last question if speed walking test do after your trial or hmm. two to three times does not definitely uh, the patient you can you can uh, go for a one trial uh, within a trial you, you, you can know whether the patient is getting what exactly you say if not again it's our duty to explain it clearly that's why we will do it first initially when i do the tug when i do the stand uh, stand up and walk test like right? the time up and go test i will walk i'll stand up from the chair i will walk my own speed i will come and sit and i will say to the patient imagine i'm talking to a patient who doesn't know english who know only chinese i will do it in more on action that was more challenging because singapore is like more of chinese and indian of course a lot of malaysians right so the basic language here is like uh, uh, tamil is a language of course but the business language is english but this elderly people are above 80 90 they are all old people they will speak chinese so i don't know chinese i'll try to imitate i try to act in front of them i say uncle watch me i use my actions so i will walk then they will copy that so you can do the trial twice should be okay first time they they can catch it so better you you explain clearly so that they you will get a proper report this is outcome measure so we need a proper outcome measure if not your 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 measurement will be wrong uh okay that actually okay. his question i got it the two to three time doesn't affect the test reduce because of fatigue Sorry. yeah there is a fatigue you stop you no need to do this you can do it on a next session you can do this before starting the session right after a session after like four sessions sir uh, eight sessions okay, we'll okay. make it eight sessions after eight session one session can be completely assessment because th this itself an exercise all this assessment okay the next last question does shoe have an impact on the ankle proprioception is it hinders the evaluation uh does it have impact on ankle proprioception definitely 
uh, we are doing all this active ankle exercise and of course we are strengthening exercise it will, it will uh, hinder any other region it will enhance it will strengthen it it increases the proprioception that's what i was talking in between i was talking about the strategy please go refer strategy it is wonderful topic if there is any chance one day i'll talk about the strategy okay then oh how should we prescribe the otago training for elderly which age okay now uh, you should follow this uh, frat the tool risk as a fall risk assessment scale if the patient is acute stroke if has a imbalance you cannot teach them you can you can selectively do this for the elderly of any age group uh, we can prescribe this exercise if they have any weakness generally they will say i cannot walk this long i cannot uh, walk the staircase underlying they will have osteoarthritis or porosis anything again uh, if it if they have, if they have a excess prescri prescription if they cannot do all these exercise you can always select some of the components there was lot of exercise right otago is like all this is combinedly is otago and if you want to strengthen a specific target muscles or if you want only like general exercise you can select this component thank you arvind for this question it's really nice you can prescribe the otago training for specific group muscles yes if you cannot do it as a whole it's well and fine but you can get this uh, strengthening or balance exercise for the elderly to improve a certain component yes okay thank you balaji and uh, there are a lot of chats in the chat box okay. uh, all are uh, even very informative and useful wonderful session thank you sir thank you so much so you got uh, so much of appreciation from delegates it's really thank you so much having such a wonderful resource and spending your valuable time with us so, so thank you so much balaji okay one last message it's like so <laughs> yeah, <tell> struggle <laughs> we are in today it will develop the strength for tomorrow so believe in ourselves and there is know that there is something inside us so <laughs> pandemic this has put our profession in high standards so all the best for the therapists uh, thank you so much for joining us i wish you all the best uh, i'm so happy to be a part of this uh, webinar and i'm so proud and i'm so humble to say i'm a i'm a nanda college student most of my friends are here i had a lot of memories with the staffs i was uh, basically I, uh, actually if you have some uh, minutes please uh, stay with me uh basically uh, i did my schooling and i did my uj in chennai i came to erode as a post graduate student it is like so contrast right everybody will move to the city for me i moved from city to a uh, place like erode uh, i i learned life and it was a stepping stone in my life and uh, from there i got a lot of values life values mm, from there i groomed it and actually i am a resource person today the thing is like i was really 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 an average student to be very frank the thing is it was an advice it was a uh, we learning that groomed me as a therapist and i I'm, i'm not in a higher level i'm just a therapist and i'm still an aspiring therapist to reach heights with all your blessings once again i uh, thank all the delegates who made this day thank you so much uh, dear principal sir thank you vijay sir thank you all staffs hi students if you are listening there you have a bright future Uh, enjoy your life uh, keep reading and make profession uh, uh, what to say make make uh, yourself proud for being in, a, in this profession really i really mean it thank you sir thank you once again thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you so much next i would like to uh, call nivita madam for deliver vote of thanks honorable chief guest respected principal hods staff students delegates uh, good afternoon everyone i nivedita on behalf of nanda college of physiotherapy would like to extend my most sincere thanks to our chief guest today dr balaji gunashekaran sir for gracing your crucial work and sharing your knowledge and making this time a meaningful one i would like to thank our management nanda college of physiotherapy for letting us to organize this webinar i must mention our deep sense of appreciation to our principal sir dr manivanan for his constant support and guidance i would like 
to thank hod of neuro department dr v vijayraj sir for being the backbone and arranging such a wonderful webinar today i would also like to thank gopal and faculties of all departments for their support finally i thank all the students delegates and participants across the globe for making this webinar a successful one thank you very much everyone thank you Okay, it's thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Gopal. Thank you, Gopal. Thanks. Thank you. He is in technical team. So I personally thank Gopal, Chitra, Ka, Janani, Nivetha, madam, and especially to our principal sir, and also our resource person, today's resource person. Thank you. Thank you so Signing much. Off. Take care. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Very, very neat and clear session. Okay. Thanks for. Uh, spending a, your time valuable time to us okay, okay. thank you I have, i have the proud moment i was working in uh, dr principal's clinic for a while <laughs> thank <laughs> you sir i have the, all those memories yeah thank yeah you, thank you very much bye thank you sir thank, thank you, you. Oh, okay, okay sir thank you it's the last okay bye sir